Hey guys, it's Godbars here, the self-proclaimed hip-hop historian, and this is the 53rd episode of my series where I grab a vinyl from my collection, talk about why I love it, what influence it had, and what its place is in the grand scheme of hip-hop. So I've been making an effort to not do the same artist twice in the same group, to try to give as many different rappers a chance as possible. That's why I'm going to save an album like Biggie's Life After Death for another group, despite it being the single best-selling album of that entire decade. However, I'm not as opposed to talking about someone I already discussed if they're in separate groups. For example, I did both the Low End Theory as well as Vaudeville Villain in my first five videos, and then in this current group I had Midnight Marauders, and in the previous one I did Mad Villainy. While the gap between my blueprint review and this video isn't going to be as vast as those ones, I still wanted to discuss his debut in this selection because the blueprint is a completely different era of Jay's everlasting career. That career being one that reminds me of groups like Outkast or De La Soul, in the way that they have so many classic albums, it's hard to find a definitive ranking for them. If you had a crowd of hip-hop heads and you went around randomly asking people how they'd rank the discography from each of those legends, you'd probably never get the same answer twice in a row. For Outkast, my favorite album has traditionally been Equemini, but there were a few times where AT Aliens held that spot, and if you asked me when I was younger, I probably would have said Stankonia. My favorite De La project is a little more consistent, with it being their second album, De La Soul is Dead, though it's worth mentioning that the older I get, the more that their fourth album, Stakes is High, grows on me. When it comes to Hope, it's always been pretty hard for me to pick a definitive favorite, because he has multiple LPs that have held that title for me for some period of time. I've mentioned before how for a long time Jay didn't have his music on streaming services, so for a while I hadn't listened to his classics front to back and 444 became the first album of his that I listened to front to back when it came out in entirety. After that, I started doing more of a deep dive on YouTube to hear projects like The Blueprint, Volume 2, or The Black Album. It was probably around then that his albums finally did come to streaming, and that's when I was really able to familiarize myself with each project. At the end of the day, it really could be up to a coin flip whether Reasonable Doubt or The Blueprint is the better album. I think it's just one of those to pimp a butterfly, good kid, mad city situations where there's really no wrong choice. Both options are pretty much as good as hip hop in their respective decades could get. It really depends more on personal preference and what experiences you're looking for. If you want Jay in his most season where he's at the top of his game and just talking his shit over Lush, Grand Production, The Blueprint, or even 444 might resonate more with you. But if you're looking for a more grimy, rugged, and unpolished experience that still has constant high-level rapping and writing, the debut might suit you a bit better. For me, it just comes down to whichever mood I'm in at the time, because with either you know you're going to get dope production, intricate and technical rhyme schemes, as well as an infectious, one-of-a-kind character and personality. It's partially why Reasonable Doubt is often mentioned in the same breath as the most impressive and successful debuts in hip-hop, like Illmatic, 36 Chambers, License to Ill, College Dropout, The Slim Shady LP, Doggy Style, or even Get Rich or Die Trying in The Chronic. Jay came into the game almost fully formed, with a voice, style, and pen that was wise beyond his years, and while I've long mentioned Jay is the most pointlessly overhated rapper, to the point I genuinely don't think anyone who says that has any idea about hip-hop in general. I can even back that up with some of my favorite Jay quotes I pulled from this album, which show how technically ahead of his time he was, even on his debut album. One of the countless lyrical gems on here is, Administer Pain. Next, the minister scream in your name. At your wake as I peek in, look in your casket, feeling sarcastic, look at him, still sleeping. Another is, you're twitching, don't do that, you making me nervous. My crew, well they do pack, them dudes as murderers. So please, would you put your hand back in sight? They don't like to see me nervous, you can understand that, right? You draw, better be Picasso, you know, the best. Cause if this is not so, ah, uh, God bless. You leave me no choice, I'll leave you with no voice. Believe you me, son, I hate to do it to you just as much as you hate to see it done. 
One other thing I wanted to quickly mention for people who might not be as familiar with more modern underground hip-hop is how there was an album released a few years ago now which had a title playing on Jay's debut here. This was 2020's Reasonable Drought, the first and only album so far at least by the enigmatic rapper Stove God Cooks. This album was fully produced by Rock Marciano, and if you haven't given it a listen yet, I strongly recommend doing so, as it's a pretty unique and creative project. But back to Reasonable Doubt, it's the idiosyncratic flow, the vivid imagery, and Jay's aptitude for creative phrasing and storytelling that really puts these already stellar group of instrumentals over the top. And those beats are classic and memorable all on their own. And when you look at the group of names Hove recruited to make them, it's not hard to see why. He's included legendary producers like Big Jazz, DJ Clark Kent, Ski Beats, Nobody, DJ Irv, and Peter Panic. But what's arguably just as impressive, if not more, is the list of features Reasonable Doubt has to offer. Artists of all kinds show up to assist Jay on certain tracks like Mary J. Blige, Notorious B.I.G., Mecca, Foxy Brown, Memphis Bleak, Big Jazz or Jazz O, and Sauce Money. There's a good amount of honorable mentions I want to give for this one, those being Can't Knock the Hustle, Politics as Usual, The Evils, Ain't Nobody, Friend or Foe, Bring It On, and Can I Live Too. My top three favorites would have to include Dead Presidents 2, Brooklyn's Finest, and 22 Twos. Thank you for watching my 53rd video. Next up, we're going to do another West Coast album. We only have a few more of those for this group, so tune in to see what that's going to be. And if you enjoyed, be sure to like, subscribe, and let me know what your favorite songs from this legendary debut are. Don't forget to have a great day, and I'll see you next time, okay? All right.